Today we're going to get into uh, a Browning BAR rifle. We've uh, had some requests from guys wanting to know how they can take apart their BAR and clean it and check it over. Um, they might have an older model that's jamming. Uh, uh, they're not really a complicated gun. They're a very reliable gun actually. They have a few little bugs and glitches in them. If you know what to look for, it's pretty easy to spot them. They're usually when they don't work, when they're jamming and uh, don't doing bad things is usually from the same thing. Uh, there's, there's some things that uh, they have a few weaknesses in them and, and then they have a lot of strengths to, to hold up very well. So we got in a uh, 7 mag here the other day. Um, it's a rough gun. It's one of the roughest I've seen in a long time. Uh, I've already done a few repairs on it here. I had a lot of chips up around the receiver and we repaired that with some super glue and sawdust to replace those. Somebody gouged out the uh, uh, swivel, uh, it's a mess. I plugged that. We're gonna have to do some pretty serious work down there, but that'll all, uh, that'll all repair very well. So, uh, anyway, we're gonna get into it today and just kind of uh, show you what to be looking for on these when they, uh, when you get one that uh, seems to be causing you some problems. First thing on disassembly is to take your forearm off. Now, this this uh, swivel stud up here is the only thing that holds the forearm on. You just use a crescent wrench, that's all you need. Get on that uh, washer and uh, take it off. Loosen it up and it should come out with a finger tight. Now, once you take that forearm off, get your screw out, it won't come off. Get guys call me up and say, man, I'm taking my uh, swivel stud out and it won't come off. Well, you got to pull back your uh, bolt. Once you pull that bolt back, everything just pull right off. Now, Let's go ahead and remove the, um, the butt stock and get that out of the way. Uh, there again, I think we've talked about in some past videos about the uh, proper uh, screws to use to remove, screwdrivers to remove uh, stocks. You notice we have guards on all these screwdrivers because if you have a flat screwdriver and you try to get down in there, be very careful. Make sure you get on the head of that screw. If you get down beside the screw, uh, miss the head of it, you can pop the side of your stock out. I repair several of those every year with the side of the stock split out from the uh, screwdrivers. Um, so let's get this stock out of here, off of here and out of the way. Now what I'm talking about when I say getting beside that screw, you know, when you put your screwdriver down in there, if you don't get on the head of it in a slot, you're going to get down beside it, give it a good squeeze, good twist, and you know, pop the side of your stock out. So if you don't have a guard, just be careful. Now this stock is rough as a cob. We're going to refinish this to look new. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing video here. We're going to start from scratch. Um, I plugged this uh, swivel hole here and we've got to do some shaping and refitting. This is going to look like new when it's all done. We'll paint out that uh, repair and hide that. Let's go ahead and break this gun down. Now the first thing to do is remove your uh, regulator. This is a gas regulator that bleeds off excess gas. Um, gas from the, um, there's a very small hole in the barrel, gas comes down in through this uh, chamber, hits this piston, kicks the piston to the rear. The excess gas is bled out through the hole in this regulator. Now I removed this regulator earlier, it was one of the worst I've ever seen. It was locked in solid tight. This is a very bad, neglected, rusty gun. And this is the original regulator I took out. I destroyed it getting it out. It was so locked in, I had to really shock it, what I did, and uh, you won't have to do this very often. This, this is a later model regulator, you just take it off with a crest wrench. The early ones just had a slot in them, boy they didn't come off either, you usually end up with vice grips on those to get them off. So they improved it and made this one with the, uh, you know, that you can take off with a wrench. But I destroyed this one getting it out because it was just locked in. The way I did it, and you probably won't have to do this. The regulator will still work. I didn't, I didn't really do anything to mess up the hole, but it looks terrible the way it's tracked. Anyway, I, I took the um, took a big hammer and I took a punch and kind of got it into the side of this regulator and started pounding on it until it shocked it and broke it loose. As I say, it, uh, it looks pretty bad and it's pretty uh, ugly, but it would work. But we're going to just trash can that because we're not going to reuse it. I've got my new one right here to put in. Now, once you take that regulator out, in most cases, the one way to, first thing to check on these guns, if you got one that's not feeding, it's not injecting, first thing to check and the way to check them 
And this is going to be a lot easier to work on if I had the magazine. I could lock it all open, but man didn't send it in. What I look for when I take these apart, if somebody's having problems with them, is I uh, lock the slide open, and I kind of thump it on my bench to see if this piston will shuffle down. This one did. Now, the only reason it did because I've had this piston out at one time and kind of cleaned it up a little bit so it slides a little freely. But this gun, the piston was all locked up in this. And uh, just for video purposes here, I've kind of removed it. Now, if you've got a gun and you take it apart, you can kind of give it a thump and this piston shakes down out of there, you're okay. That piston's free. But oft times, especially on these early 70 models, the problem with them was they would uh, plate the piston. It's chrome plated, but they wouldn't plate the cylinder. So the piston, nothing goes wrong with it. In most cases, you can just take a long punch, kind of push that piston out. Be careful, don't gouge your cylinder. Now, we around here have an old piston we have cut a slot in. We kind of use this to hammer out really locked in pistons. We just lay it on there, then we just use this inertia block to pound it out with. But this one I, I removed earlier. But it was locked in pretty tight. Now, the piston's plated has a hard plating. This one's really cruddy. We're going to buff it off. And the cylinder's all rusty because it's just raw steel. And uh, so that uh, that uh, raw steel in that cylinder just will rust up and lock up on your piston, especially in these 70 models. You're really bad about it. Then you've got a jammed up gun. It's never going to work. It's a single shot. So you got to get the uh, every so often. Now what they did later in later years, they, they improved on this. They started plating the cylinders. And once they did that, that, that really helps a lot. Uh, but in the meantime, these early guns, uh, they're just famous for corroding up on that cylinder and locking up on your piston, turning your gun into a single shot. So I removed the uh, piston. Now, let's go ahead and get uh, the rails out of here. These are support rails, they call them. Let's get those out of the way. And let's get the uh, action rails up and out of there. They just lift up and out. And then let's remove this whole inertia block. Now you gotta have your piston out before you can get this out. You just take this and pull it forward and uh, bring it out. Now, this gun is kind of unusual in that it still has the nylon buffer in place here. Oft times these buffers crack and break and fall out and then they're gone. Uh, and usually that's a sign of a gun that's cycling a little hard. If it's if it's uh, if that uh, nylon buffer is gone, that means that this inertia block is slamming back into it so hard that it breaks it, and, and uh, that's a that sign of a gun that's not cycling correctly, cycling too violently. Sometimes you can correct that by putting a different regulator in that's got a bigger hole in it to bleed off more gas, and that'll make them cycle better. Now, on these old guns, and I've laid one out here, it's a good idea to replace your action spring. This spring I took out, it's about an inch shorter than, than the new spring. Uh, so they collapse. It just helps a lot to replace that spring. So we're going to trash can the old spring, keep that new spring handy. Now, if you're just taking apart your gun to clean it and what have you, don't take this floor plate out because they're kind of tricky to put in. There's just really no need to take it out. Uh, if you take that out, you're just going to make yourself a lot of work. You need a slave pen to put that back in place. And this thing really, nothing goes wrong with them. They just last forever. Go ahead and put your safety on when you pull this trigger group out. And that way it doesn't drop your hammer and your hammer won't catch on the back of the receiver. Then just slide it out. Now, these trigger groups on BAR rarely ever have any problems. They're simple and they just work well. Check them to see if they're disconnecting. Uh, hold your trigger back. Pull your trigger and hold it. And bring this back, your hammer back, and see if it cocks. And then... Uh, to make the gun work, you should have to release that trigger, and you see your little connector jump up under the steer. And this one's disconnecting. I'll check it several times to make sure it disconnects, and it does. Now this one's just cruddy and needs to be cleaned up. We're going to pull it down later on because we're going to have to anodize this uh, uh, trigger guard. We're going to also anodize the floor plate because we're going all out on this gun. Man wants it to look like new. And uh, we have the ability to anodize all that aluminum you can't blue, of course, so that's anodizing all you can do. Now, to remove your bolt, slide it all the way to the rear. And what you're doing when you do that is, is moving your dust cover forward and getting it out of your way. Now, on this operating handle, bolt handle, operating handle, 
they're right in front of it's a little small latch you can hardly see it down there but look right in front of the handle you'll see it you have to lift that up towards you and then that'll make your operating handle slide forward and uh, then you can remove your uh, uh, operating handle uh, I had this thing yesterday I had it out and it was uh, a little trickier than most to get out I don't know why they usually just kind of fall out in your hands but this one for some reason just likes to be obstinate move your buffer bag your plate back a little bit and get it all that out of the way you might have to lift this little latch up again and then just slide it forward and out like so they usually come out easier than that of course now I'm going to make a video it's fighting me so anyway there's your operating handle now on these uh, early Belgium made BARs your bolt assembly just lift straight up and out. Now on the uh, Portuguese models and the later models you have to kind of twist that bolt sideways. It's kind of springs in the receiver and then they come up and out. Same with, excuse me, same thing on your uh, stock bolt plate here. On these uh, Belgian models they just kind of just lift right out. Now if you get a Portuguese model, uh, one of the later manufactured ones, you got to slide this stock bolt plate forward and get it in your receiver and then you just get some pliers on it. Kind of pop it sideways and it'll come out. It'll spring out. Now, things to look for on this breech bolt are uh, one problem they develop sometimes. I've seen it quite often. This one's really a cruddy, dirty gun. Look at that crud. Uh, this piece on the side is called a timing piece right here. This comes, this rides in the receiver and comes out into a slot when the bolt gets up into the battery position and this timing piece pops out. But what it does when it's when your gun, when the gun is fired, and your action rods uh, are bringing this bolt to the rear, it'll open the bolt up, and the timing piece drops into place. Now what that does, that locks this bolt head so it's in a timed position, so that when it comes back into battery, it's where it should be. And when it comes forward into battery, it'll meet the slot in the receiver, and uh, it'll make it so the bolt head will rotate and close. And uh, what happens sometimes on these, if you get one of these and get your timing piece out of your way, and this is not real smooth, you can look down in there and you'll see a burr that this timing piece puts on the bolt head. That needs to be taken off. Uh, and to do that, you just pop your dust cover up and off. Uh, remove the dust cover, and it just springs on, on there. Pop it off. And then, um, to get it all disassembled and broke down, I won't do it, but I'll show you. Because you're not going to have to do this very often. But uh, you have a firing pin, retaining pin here. You can hardly see it, but it's back here on the tail of this bolt. And I can see it right going through there. You need to drive that out, which they come out kind of hard sometimes. Then you take the firing pin out. And when you do that, then you've got this large pin here that will lift up and out. Then your whole bolt head will come off. But we won't take that apart because it's pretty rare that that happens. Uh, you want to always check your bolt. Make sure this this internal ejector in your bolt face here. Make sure that's free. Push it in and out. And check it. Check your extractor. Make sure the spring on is good. Make sure it comes back into place. And um, that's really about the only problem these have. Now, I have seen on some of the newer manufactured Portuguese assembled guns. I've seen them break little chips and uh, areas off of the uh, actual bolt body. Um, the old Belgian guns for some reason seem to hold up better and don't do that. But the biggest problem these Belgian guns have, early guns, is this